Today's topic is propolis, and we are very pleased to have with us Terry Lemerand. Terry Lemerand is a retailer, author, educator, and entrepreneur. He's been in the natural products industry for more than 40 years and has developed and researched over 400 nutritional and botanical formulations, and many of these remain top-selling products on the market today. If you'd like to learn more about natural medicine and have uh, information on goal-setting, diet, exercise, I hope you'll visit us at www.terrytalksnutrition.com. So without further ado, I want to introduce Terry Lemerand. Hello, Terry. Hello, Cheryl, and thank you very much. And greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I am absolutely convinced that there are natural products, natural ingredients, natural remedies, if they're scientifically researched and clinically studied, they can equally match a medication or drug and might even outperform them in some cases, but they have to be well-researched and clinically studied as well at least for the occasional minor illnesses, that we can use these products with confidence and without fear of side effects. And one of those ingredients I want to share with you today, and that is propolis. I think propolis is health from nature. I think it's one of the closest things to a natural antibiotic than any other substance available today. It's a miracle of what it does for uh, a multi-antimicrobial, so for, therefore it works on all kinds of pathogens. It's antiviral, antibacterial, and also works antifungal infection. It's a very interesting substance. Many people call it bee glue, propolis, and they believe that the bees make it. Well, it isn't quite that they make it. It's actually a substance the bees gather or collect from various trees, shrubs, and buds, and they bring it back into the hive in order to sterilize the hive. They also want to make their hive uh, uh, sterile from bacteria or viruses or any other substance or, or even a mole or a mouse that can get into the hive and contaminate the hive. So they want to use it as a glue. They take the material from the bees and the shrubs and the buds they mix it with beeswax and the saliva from the bees, and then they seal and pr protect the various cracks and crevices of the hive from any kind of contaminant. Propolis protects the hive. And really the word propolis means defend the city. So it protects our city, otherwise our body, for example. It contains over 300 constituents including resins, beeswax, essential oils, and other organic compounds, and many types of bioflavonoids from the plants in which it is gathered from. It's really ancient medicine. Propolis has been used since ancient times as a disinfectant, antiseptic for wound healing. Propolis was listed in the official London Pharmacopoeias in the 1600s. And by the 1800s, propolis was in wide use because of its healing properties. And during the Second World War, propolis was used in Russia to treat tuberculosis. The first modern scientific paper on propolis was published in 1908. It documented activity of propolis compounds, antihistamine, antiviral, antifungal, anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, liver protectant, ulcer healing, anti-HIV, and antioxidant. In fact, many of you who have followed my work know that I have a very, very strong feeling for the healing properties of curcumin. Just recently, I ran across some studies that might even show that propolis equals curcumin or would make a very good complementary ingredient along with curcumin for the benefits as an anti-cancer agent. Really good research is going on right now in that area of research. So now some of the modern uses for propolis. General immune tonic for cold and flu treatment, viral infections, for candida and other fungal infections, canker sores, fever blisters, other bacterial infections, and also for peptic ulcers or other gastrointestinal problems and equal to or better results than prescription drugs. 
and always you have the bonus of no side effects. So, so here are some of the Propolis research that we've just come across. Very interesting research. Propolis for asthma. Here was a design study of 48 people with chronic asthma, a six-month study. Half received propolis, half received a placebo. The number of asthmatic attacks at night, lung functions at study beginning and end, and the results for propolis, nighttime asthma attacks reduced 60%, lung function increased 30%, inflammatory compounds, the prostaglandins and the leukotrienes reduced by 30 to 40%, so the results for the placebo, there were no significant changes. Propolis was really very significantly improved over placebo. And here's one that I think is very interesting because this is ideal for children. Propolis is very, very safe. There are really no known side effects. And it can be used very nicely for earache and sore throat, which is a common problem with babies and infants and children. So here are 56 children, ages two years and older, with earaches or sore throats, viral infection, were treated with propolis or watched without any treatment for three days. Because these were viral infections, antibiotics were not prescribed. Antibiotics should only be prescribed for bacterial infection. In most cases, many doctors prescribe antibiotics when there are viral infections but for cold and flu and for earaches and sore throat, only about 2% of these conditions are caused by bacteria where they all would be caused by viral infection. After three days, the propolis group with earaches had a 70, 50, excuse me, 75% improvement. The sore throat group had 88% symptom improvement. And the improvements for watch and wake children were only 20% and 64%. So propolis was outstanding and more significantly effective than just a watch and wait group of people. Here's propolis for diabetic foot ulcers, a design study of 108 patients with chronic diabetic foot ulcers. Group one, standard wound care. Group two, standard wound care plus topical propolis once a week for six weeks. In week one of the group that had just standard wound care, wound area reduced 16%. Week three, wound area reduced by 44%. And in the seventh week, 5% of the participants had fully healed ulcers. Now the group two that had the standard wound care plus topical propolis once a week for six weeks. Week one, wound area reduced 41% versus 16% for the wound area reduced. Week three, wound area reduced 63% compared to 44%. And in week seven, 13% of participants have fully healed ulcers versus 5% of the other group. Propolis for the herpes virus. This is very interesting. Herpes is caused by a virus. It's the virus that commonly we are infected by the chickenpox virus for shingles, for herpes one and two, not so by the, by the chickenpox virus, but also a viral infection, causing cold sores and fever blisters and even genital herpes. The herpes virus was in, uh, incubated with a standardized propolis extract called GH2002. I travel a lot quite extensively, in fact, looking for scientific products, looking for products that are scientifically studied, clinically studied, so that I can bring back to my listeners and my readers and advise them of some of the products that are available worldwide that they may have availability to, to in order to use a natural product versus a drug that may have side effects. Now, the Propolis GH2002, I found in Germany, and there are several very good studies on this propolis GH2002. 100% suppression of herpes virus in 60 minutes. It's, a, it's amazing how fast this product works. It's available in Germany as a propolis cream, also available as a propolis capsule. 
So you can take it internally to boost the immune system, to strengthen the immune system, and also to suppress any kind of viral, bacterial, or fungal infection. The propolis cream, which is made with GH2002, is very effective against cold sores and fever blisters. In fact, at the first sign, and usually those who have a cold sore or fever blister know what I'm talking about, they can feel a tingling. I used to get cold sores and fever blisters when I was a child quite often. So I know exactly where they are because they remain in the same nervous system channel and they come out exactly the same place every time. They're in the nervous system. So when they come up to the end of the nervous system, at the very end of the nervous system, on the surface of the skin, they'll pop out in a blister. So that's why in shingles we have so many blisters because the nervous system is attacked at such a high degree, but cold sores and fever blisters, you might only have one of the cold sore or fever blister break out at a time, and it'll be exactly the same spot. So if you could feel that spot on your lip, or on your upper area of the, of the mouth, and you can feel a really tingling or a reddening or a little bit of a soreness, but you haven't seen a blister yet, but you know that it's going to pop out. And it always pops out under a stress or some kind of uh, very tense moments. Sometimes it could be just stressful of the life, or sometimes why did that married bride Always get a cold sore or fever blister when she's getting married. The day it pops out, the stress of the wedding. And always stress seems to be preceding. It could be excessive sun. It could be just the stress of life. It could be any kind of stress that you seem to feel uncomfortable with, causing the fever blister or the cold sore to pop out. Now, if you apply the propolis cream to that area where there seems to be a cold sore or a fever blister, the pain will be gone in seconds. Now, it may take a day or two if the blister has popped out to recover that blister so that you do not have a – well, actually, it, it crusted the, the blister so you don't have an open spot. You don't have an open wound. Other types of products like acyclovir, which is a medication that is prescribed by, by doctors – uh, there are two drug companies in the world that make a acyclovir product. Uh, they may take several days before that works, and that may be even a 5% acyclovir cream or, or tablet versus a 0.5%. So propolis is far more effective at even a very smaller dosage than a drug used for the same kind of condition. Here's the, what I was talking about just previously. Propolis versus acyclovir. The effects on pain from cold sores. Propolis is so far more effective in reducing the outbreak of the cold sore or fever blister and reducing the pain and also closing the wound so you don't have the tenderness and the um, harm of the, the, of the uh, cold sore wound. And here's 102 patients that received propolis, GH2002, or acyclovir, 80% of the propolis participants had direct healing of the red, from the redness stage without experiencing blisters or crusting. Physicians rated propolis as good or very good in 90% of cases versus only 40% in the acyclovir group. Propolis was particularly effective for pain relief. Now, propolis versus the drug-resistant microbes. Propolis GH2002 tested against drug-resistant pathogens, MRSA. The strains of MRSA were highly susceptible to propolis. Low concentrations of propolis were also very effective at killing fungal pathogens, such as candida strains. And you don't need a very high quantity of propolis to have it be effective. And I'll tell you that in just a moment. Now, how do you get results from taking propolis? Well, first of all, you want to make sure that you look for the one that has the highest degree of clinical studies, proven itself to be effective and works. So pick your propolis carefully, and here's why. All propolis contains beeswax up to 55% and resin up to 35%. Now, 
The beeswax and the resin cannot be digested by humans. So we get nothing out of propolis. So if you have, a, let's say, for example, you have 100 milligrams of propolis, and you have 55% wax, that's 55 milligrams, and if you have 35% resin, that's another 35 milligrams. So out of 100 milligrams of regular propolis, you are getting nothing in terms of a active propolis activity. But if you get a very high purified propolis, by removing the wax, the resin, and other impurities yield a more powerful concentrated extract. And that's exactly what they have done in the propolis GH2002. All the wax, all the resin is removed, so you have 100% pure propolis. No wax, no resin, which is not digestible by the human, human digestive system. You can use it topically for cold sores and fever blisters in a cream. You can use it orally as a capsule, somewhere between 100 to 200 milligrams daily for general immune support, cold and flu, for yeast infection, for GI problems such as peptic ulcer, and any other form of antibacterial, viral, or fungal infection. It'll kill all pathogens. Very, very, this is one of my favorite kinds of research I like to come across because it gives you so much value for what you are taking and so inexpensive compared to drugs, which always have side effects that you should worry about. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you have more knowledge about propolis, one of my favorite products, and I hope you find a very good one. So look for GH2002 and make sure you get a good purified form of propolis and that you use it on a daily basis to keep you and your immune system strong and healthy throughout the winter season and throughout the year. Thank you for listening. Thank you so very much, Terry. Always informative. Uh, lots of excellent information on propolis. Uh, folks, if you are interested in more information on natural products to make and keep you healthy, uh, feel free to visit us at terrytalksnutrition.com. While there, please sign up for our free weekly newsletter. We are very, very scrupulous about your email. We never sell them or share them with others. Uh, and it is a once a week newsletter that gives you the latest on natural health and inspirational messages. Also, while you're visiting that website, you can listen to recordings of past seminars. You can ask Terry your questions. There's an Ask Terry's question and answer area as well. So thank you again for all of your kind attention, and until we all get together again, good health to you. Bye-bye.